Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Final Growth to Sales Why Enemy Hey. Today, we are taking a look at mental distractions. Now, there are eight of them that a human being must avoid in order to have their own fulfillment, in order for them to be able to attain their goals in life. Eight distractions. There could be more, but for now, we have been able to identify eight of them. Now, the first one is attachments. Now, you already know what attachment is. It simply means that the human being has taken something that is other than its authentic self and has found fulfillment in that thing. It is something that actually suspends the human progress. There was a time you had a drive to achieve certain things, to become, to attain. And then in the process, you got something that seemed to have filled in the gap for you and you loved that thing so well and you rested on it. From time to time, whenever you felt that level of unfulfillment, that level of desire, you went for that thing and it tends to satisfy you. After a while, it became boring. It is no longer giving you that full kick. But because of the fact that you don't have an alternative and you are scared of exploring further, you leaned on it. It's also possible that you explored and found more and more elements that you had to latch onto. In one of my other videos, I explained in details how we get attached to things. And most of these things that the human being is attached to are things that are other than they. They are peripherals. They are, you know them, material things generally. Attachment to material things is a major negation of the human being. You need to avoid it. The second thing is resentment. Oh, resentment is anger. It is a feeling of unjust treatment meted out on one by people, by the system, by the country, by whatever it is. Now, what we have been talking about on this channel is that your life is 100% within your control. If you think it is karma that is troubling you, I tell you one thing, that karma itself is works. And who does the works? You. Your karmas are the actions you have taken at some point in time. So we will put it this way that karma is life's reaction, response to your actions. It is like the heat that is consequent upon the light bulb. Even when you turn off the connection, you turn off the light, the heat still persists for a while. You cannot escape your actions. They must have a recompense to visit on you. Therefore, when people do anything to you, do not carry it in anger and bottle it up. Because if you do, you are hampering yourself. The moment you spend in resentment, in anger, in ruining things, you are spending that time in self-negation. You are putting powers in the hands of other people, in the hands of the event that you are resenting. You are simply saying that these people have power over you and they are controlling your responses to life. It is a major distraction. You don't have any time for it. Learn to forgive and move on. The next trap, that's the third one, is this anxiety. If you cannot change a situation, then surrender to life. If you can change a situation, then change it. What you cannot change, be courageous enough to embrace it, to accept it as it is. There is power in surrender. When you surrender not to the problem, not to the people or the circumstances, you are surrendering to life, having absolute faith that life is never against you, that life never leaves you on accompanied, that whatever happens to you is for your own best. Let go of your plans. When you have a plan and you have put in your best, but things are threatening that plan, you know that this weakness, this derailment is not coming from your own laxity. It is coming from something you have no control over. My friend, trust life and let anxiety go. When you allow anxiety to come into you, you are going to be suspending your being, you are going to be giving power and force to the enemy force. And the enemy is nothing but your misinterpretations of life. You need to understand. 
that if you will take your power, nobody can take it away from you. And I tell you this thing, there is power in surrender. When you surrender to the universe and say, this is the best I have been able to do, and I don't see any way I can change the picture, what else is next? Learn to ask questions of the universe and trust that nothing can happen to you if it is not the best possible. And it will be unto you according to your faith. Now, the fourth element, my friend, you may not like this, and I'm sure you will like it at the end of the day. It is sex, the three-letter word, the big old baby. That is the issue. The thing I'm going to tell you is this. Sex is a major trap in life. The thing is, don't engage in sex frivolously. There is a tantric saying that any human being who makes sex the centerpiece of their lives are human beings who one should not expect any major things from. They can't hit major achievements because your vital force is being eroded each time you are engaged in the action of sex. Therefore, you should have a partner, just one, that you stick to. If you start going from place to place thinking that it is exercise, it is some sports you are performing, you are losing your focus. These things have a way. Every distraction eats at our focus and takes away from us our human capacity to concentrate. Therefore, don't play around thinking that you are having fun. You are not. Because in sex, there is death waiting at the door. So stick to one partner and be focused. I have spoken a lot about this issue. I don't want to go into them in details, but it's one thing you have to avoid. And then the second thing about sex, which is even more dangerous, is it's either you are having sex or you are not having it. So don't make the thoughts, the event of sex, something you think on. If you have done it, move beyond it. If you have not done it, then don't do it. That is what it is. Don't keep thinking about it. Let go. Thinking about sex consistently is even more dangerous than having sex in itself because it is eating at your energy. It is sapping your energy. Sex action might take maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, how long it is it, it may be, but you could think about it for a whole day, a whole week, you see, and in each of these times, it's taking so much energy from you and you are being eroded. Your Vital force is being sapped. Sex in a person's head is a major distraction. It will kill your goals. It will kill your vitality. If you are not having sex, don't think about it. If you are having sex, have it and let go. And after you have done it, don't try to reflect on it and start. No, let it go. It is not the best of things to dwell on. That is very key. The next thing is pride. A lot of false feel that we have a right to be proud. We are proud by the things we have attained. Pride is not a problem. Pride simply means that, okay, you are happy with yourself. You feel fulfilled in yourself. Because I keep saying, love yourself. Have self-esteem. Have a very good self-image. That is what I approve. Feel worthy. But pride becomes this. When you feel worthy at the expense of the worthiness of another, that becomes pride. When you have a sense of esteem you have good esteem about yourself but you are comparing yourself to others by elevating yourself and think that others are lower than you are you are making a very big blunder no human being is beneath you by any standard it doesn't matter whether they are educationally inferior to you it doesn't matter whether they are financially or socially inferior to you by that word inferior i'm, I'm using it from the perspective of language because that thing called inferiority does not exist. It only exists in the mind of the person that feels inferior. In the same way, superiority also exists in the mind of the person that feels superior. They are all deception. They are all illusionary concepts. They don't exist. No human being is inferior to another. When your wealth becomes something that denigrates and reduces another person, then that becomes pride and it is self-abnegation, self-reduction. Because what you do to one, you do to yourself. And those sort of pride are actually the flip side of inferiority. You feel very inferior. You haven't really gotten your center in life. Therefore, you are basing your value on the things you have done, on the peripheral things, on the things that are incidental to existence. But that is not where your power comes from, my friend. Your power comes from knowing yourself. And this is what pride is going to prevent you from because pride will never allow you to know yourself because the human soul is not proud. The human soul understands its connectedness to life with life. It understands 
that as it is, so are all other souls. Therefore, nothing makes it more important than another soul. You may belong in certain religion, in certain organization that tells you that your membership your association with them makes you superior, makes you a royalty. But I tell you, that is a lie. Because every human soul is a royalty. They are all, including you, extensions, emanates of the divine, the supreme. Nobody is trash and nobody should be trashed. Respect people, respect yourself. The next point is doing things exclusively for material gain. That is the pleasure of getting something else. There's something I learned from Osho some years ago. The world is totality. Totality. Osho says that when you do things with the intention of getting something else as the driver, that action of yours is no longer total. It is consequential. That action of yours is enslaved to the consequence. Selfless service is what kills this kind of uh, thing. If you are doing things for the good that it can do to others. If you are doing things for the sake of that thing because you think it is the right thing to do, you are being total. Therefore, take your job. Yes, you are to be paid salaries, that's beautiful, you are to be given wage and everything, but putting all your effort into that job as if you were serving the divine, as if you were a slave of that institution or, or that person for whom you work. That's why the scripture says in the Bible saying that do it as unto the Lord. He was not talking about just slaves or servants. He's talking about all human beings. Anything that you do as work, something that pays you wages, you should do it not for the money. Do it as unto the source, as unto the supreme, as if your life depends on it, as if it is your, not even as if, because it is your own contribution to existence. See, all of us, in this lower universe we are in a workplace and we are to earn our stay here by the things we do for others so working for us is service and if we are paid for it we are grateful payment is secondary but the key thing is contribution so when you are looking for a job if you want to work you should have this mindset of saying i want to fulfill my destiny. I want to contribute to life because people are contributing to me every single day. The food I eat, the clothes I wear, the cameras that I use, the light that I use, cream that I rub on my body, they are works of other people. What is my own? But when you are doing it because of what you are going to get, it is a dangerous thing. Let me tell you how dangerous it is. Because you are doing it for gain, you have expectations. And when those expectations are fulfilled, you have more expectations. It keeps expanding because the human soul can never be satisfied by anything material. So when you hinge the satisfaction of the human soul's quest for self-knowledge on material things, on gains and pleasure, when you get to a certain level and you get pleasure, after that level, the desire expands. So that pleasure is longer enough, you go for more. And when it gets to a point that that pleasure is not being fulfilled anymore, what happens is that your expectations are dashed. When your expectations are dashed, guess what happens? You are angry. You see, when your expectations are not fulfilled, you are angry. Resentment comes in. And what is anger? Behind anger is fear. And when fear steps into the human life, the human possibilities are reduced. When the human possibilities are reduced, it means that one is working with limited possibilities. Therefore, that is no longer ideal and then all kinds of problems step into the place. Don't allow greed to be part of your being. So don't work for the money. Don't work for people to praise you. Don't work to get the attention of other people. Work exclusively for the good of it, for the improvement, for the betterment of humanity. The next thing is our failure to create boundaries. You see all of these things that I've mentioned, they happen when a human being has not fully defined themselves. When you define yourself as a being of power, as a being that is self-fulfilled, as a being that doesn't require anybody's impute to find its own satisfaction. It does not require any material things to fulfill itself. That is who you are. You define your boundaries. You don't need anything material to give you satisfaction. The problem is this. When you allow material things to 
be the source of your satisfaction. The first thing you are going to do is that you are getting an intoxicant because material things matter is intoxicating. And when matter intoxication gets into place, the brain expands at every occasion it gets into contact with an intoxicant. It gets to a point that you keep increasing the level of that quantity. And then what happens is that you become a junkie. There are many people who are junkies of life that they keep running after material things. Somebody was saying the other day that his passion is to drive fast cars and he keeps buying fast cars. The person is actually an addict. But you see, there is no human being that finds satisfaction and fulfillment in any material things. None. It can never come. You keep getting more and more and you keep losing your place. Material things are meant to distract you. So if you don't create a boundary and say, this is who I am. I am self-fulfilled. I am self-satisfied. I am my own intoxicant. My intoxicants are within me. When I serve, I serve totally. And when I give, I give in totality, not because of any other thing, but because it is the right thing to do. Draw that boundary and you will be a happier person. And the last thing is lack of concentration, lack of focus. All of these things create lack of concentration. But when you live a life where there is no meditation, where you are just, you wake up in the morning, you jump into life, you come back in the evening, you jump into bed, you just live a life that is not ordered. So lack of orderliness is another distraction. You have to pull yourself down and give yourself a sense of order.